Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. We're on the end of our exploration campaign in Galente Highsec. And we're going to basically be exploring right here until we enter the 1.0 system of Duripan right here. And then we're gonna run some T4 Abyss sites. Pretty much that's what I'm gonna do right here because the exploration luck has not been on my side recently. So I think it is time to make myself feel a bit more better about myself by earning a bit of isk in the abyss, which I know I'll get, unlike in the exploration, which is a bit of uh, RNG fest all over the place. Uh, but it definitely has been doing better nowadays in exploration than it used to be. It has a lot to do with my change of habits of scanning a bit more, doing hideaways. But it has still not been on my side this last few days, so it is time to do a bit more abyss. But while we're going towards this abyss location, I'll just give it another shot, just in case. Just in case we've managed to get some sick escalations from these anomalies or cosmic signatures right here. It's not so long after downtime. Hopefully not a lot of explorers have been out here running and hopefully there are more sites. But I don't think there's any particular difference in the spawn rate of, of escalations if you compare it to before and after downtime. It's just the same pretty much. I'm just thinking that they're like, you know, less people out, I'm guessing, since most of them are probably gone on their breaks since it is downtime. So I'll be generally speaking less competition. I hope that will make stuff a bit better for us. Seems like the core probe launchers are not working too well. They're not finding anything, even though I'm scanning around this planetary body over here. I hope to find something more, but I feel like these are not combat sites because usually combat sites scan a little bit uh, quicker than these ones that are going on right here. We'll align to this next anomaly and do this as soon as this one's down. Yeah, I doubt these are, this one at least is a combat site because it's way too hard to scan down. This one over on the other hand, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it could be. It could just be that I initially tried to scan a bit different, like in the wrong location when I first tried scanning. There's a lot of NPCs here for just a refuge. Look how many wrecks are here. It's like almost den level amount of wrecks going on right here. It doesn't seem to be anything. Or well, maybe you have a big scan. Perhaps I'll find something. No, it doesn't seem to be the case. That seems still extremely difficult to find. So I doubt this is also a combat site because combat sites usually scan down a lot quicker than this. I've never encountered a good combat site that didn't uh, scan or that scans as hard as this. Okay, recall drones and go to the next refuge since nothing was here. It's a Pentis refuge. A total haul here. What is this now? We are 168 million. Is that including any, like, okay, ammunition is a few million right here. Two million from ammunition. Otherwise, 169 million from the whole haul. Majority has been abyssal loot. And you can now see why I, generally speaking, prefer abyss over exploration as a, like a primary isk making activity. But it is nice when you get the good drops though. Deploy drones, just have them shoot in the background. In real life where I am right now. It's very hot. I'm feeling... I, when, I, when I go outside, I'm dripping in sweat. I do like these workouts outside in these uh, park gyms. And it's just, uh, it gets uh, sweaty very quickly. And uh, it's just the same thing inside. I don't have AC. So <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a bit roasted inside, even with the window open. It's uh, pretty toasty with Eve, especially when you have a big computer that generates a lot of heat as well. Oh, it's quite appropriate that we're going to do the Firestorm Abyss. Ooh, look here. We just got a Serpentis Narcotics Warehouse. Ooh, let's see where it is. Escalations. Oh, okay, cool. Can I add this to Root and do this next time after we've done these Abyssal sites. That'll be pretty fun to see. I had a feeling on this last refuge right here, I was going to get something and I did. <laughs> It felt like it was a long time since I actually got a escalation, so it was about time. Okay, is there any cool combat signatures in the next system, maybe? Trosque, where is Trosque here? See now, there's a refuge hideaway. Okay, I can run them. Maybe get more three out of tens, imagine that. See now, we're only two jumps away from Duripan. I've, okay, so I've cleared out the system of Troskeser, and we're going to go to Duripan to do some T4 abyss sites to 
hopefully, and some goodies, and hopefully later, when we go to the system of Mormon, which is where that escalation is located later. And hopefully we will get something good this time. It will be unfortunate that we, again, not get good stuff, but I have good experience with the 3 out of 10 Serpentis site. There's a lot of possible loot uh, containers you can get from there. Just scanning here in Durupon, I found actually a Serpentis 2 out of 10 right here. Unfortunately, we can't run it. The this Tech 3 destroyers are the biggest stuff that you can, or the most advanced, quote unquote, advanced ships you can bring there. So we would have run it then, but it doesn't seem like you can do anything here since it's not, well, our gear is too strong for what we find here for the Serpentis 2 out of 10s. And the Serpentis drug outlet, which is also a Serpentis uh, 1 out of 10. It's uh, two DED sites in one system. You can sometimes find them. Unfortunately, we can't run any of them. What about this third signature? Maybe it'll be something cool here. Let's see. Maybe a 3 out of 10? Maybe a 4 out of 10? Who knows? Who knows? It could be a third DED site in the same system since it seems like not a lot of people have been here. Cosmic signature. Ooh, okay. What is this? I mean, it would make kind of sense that if there are two DED sites here that no explorers have been here, so it could be possible that this is an even better DED site here. Or it could just be that there are other people like us who are in Gila's who are not able to actually run these lower level DED sites, so they just skip them. This is very unlikely a DED site because of the having to use one AU scan is very unlikely going to be it. But I just want to see, just want to see what this is. Data site, knew it. I knew it. But okay, we're going to do a refit now to do some abyss sites. T4 Firestorm is what the name of the game is. T4 Firestorm. So refitting here is very simple. It's just a case of putting the core probe launcher in here and the drone link augmenter fitting here. We're actually getting cargo spaces quite lacking. <laughs> yeah, filling up with quite a bit of abyss fluid. It's taking a bit of cargo. I think it's the zero or the isogen that takes the most amount of space. You can just warp to a celestial that's very far away. There we go. Make it safe as well. You can see these isogen that take eight. Okay, not that much. This takes quite a bit of space. Now oh, we've not got any survey data actually that's quite strange oh yeah no i sold it all i sold it all that's why i sold it all a while ago because i came across a concord station you can sell the survey data there for max price the npc buy orders okay, let's reload the inferno furies double check that everything's all right with the fit and we'll just launch straight into the abyss got decent ehp drones look good I'll just jump right now then. Raging Firestorm Filament. This one right here. Oh, not chaotic. I think we could get through a few chaotic firestorms, but I definitely think that we'll get eventually popped if we were to go in them because we have a decent tank, but not enough tank that I think we'd be able to do the T5 Firestorm. Maybe, maybe, but it is going to be very close, at least in certain waves. Okay, we've got some Dracovac waves here, so pretty chill. I'll go for this conduit or this extraction node over here. This, we'll go for these Kikimoras first, and then we'll go for the Dracovacs afterwards. It's annoying that I noticed that the Kikimoras have a tendency to just go for your drone straight away. It's pretty annoying. Hopefully they don't, but I think that they will. We'll see here. I've got a Starving Dama as well, which is a bit annoying. We'll take him out actually after the Kikimoras. Because even though we have got a pretty decent capacitor, it's still one not the best. So we'll eventually get new to that if we forget about this Starving uh, Dama over here. But we'll just take out the high damage dealers, which are the Kikimoras, and Starva and Drekavax afterwards. Good that there are no web of fires because that'll just make everything a lot slower and we're going so slow. Is it minus 50%? Yeah, minus 50%. I've noticed recently there's been a lot of minus 50% uh, kind of abyss sites or T4s at least I've been getting. Like Usually I'm not used to having the minus 70% resistance in the T4s and just occasionally having minus 70%. But I feel like it's very common that we get the uh, minus 50% here in the T4 Firestorm recently. Just a bit of RNG. Obviously everything is a bit of RNG, but I just 
I'm not used to seeing minus 50%, but it feels like it's very common right here. It's good for us. We get more tank. The only thing is that it takes a bit longer to get through these guys who have a lot of thermal um, resist or not, or have uh, like a low thermal resist. There'll be a little bit more thermal resist since it's only minus 50%. It's not going to be a, that big of a difference, and we will have a bit more survivability. So overall, we'll be a bit more relaxing, just maybe a tiny bit less efficient in terms of time completion. <laughs> okay, I'll go for this. Use our light missiles on the stuff that's in range because these Drekovax are very far away. And they are, in fact, looking like they're wanting to go for my drones. So we will just quickly pop this. Uh, no, I mean this dynamic over here. Maybe put one of these hammerheads on the Drekovax just to, uh, to keep damage on him. But it seems like this guy wouldn't be surprising if that is the one that's getting my hammerhead too to get low shield HP right here. Now we don't even need to use our shield boost in our wasting capacitor. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to destroy that down. It's just the way it is. I'll move towards this by adaptive cash. I'll take out this other Draco back over here. He's going to probably get rep to actually full HP because he's going to get reps from all these Draco backs over here. I think Draco backs have pretty potent remote repairs. They just feel pretty strong. I don't know if they are, but uh, just uh, when I have been encountering Drekowak waves with Kikimoras, I've noticed that they Kikimora, they tend to get pretty good reps in. I'm guessing that it is from the uh, the Drekovacs that they get good reps. And we'll use our missiles even just to take out this Drekovac even quicker. I'll just shoot him there. And I'll put one volley on this fire adapter over here to get this open. Drones here. This guy. And we'll go for the light missiles on this dynamic over here since this guy is probably going to get out of range sooner or later very quick very quick where's this okay four minutes um i would have hoped it to be a bit quicker but it's still like i average time completion is maybe 10 to 12 minutes of these t4 so it's still not that bad oh we should be boosting our shields i forgot about the shield booster they're going down pretty quick these guys yeah managed to kill all of them before even getting all the loot Pretty decent right there. Move towards the transfer conduit. Transfer me to the next room. Transfer me to the next room. Using the hybrid keeler. Uses passive recharge, but also shield boosting capabilities at the same time. It's a very strong ship. Not particularly expensive either. Like we're on the blingiest module is this one right here. Pythium C type medium shield booster. Otherwise the rest is basic. Pretty basic. This one is a little bit bling. This is bling, but it doesn't cost that much, like 10 million. Tech 2, tech 2, everything, tech 2, really. Okay, a rogue drone, super easy. Oh, I like it, because these two uh, extraction nodes tend to be very close to each other if you get this room. So it's quite nice when you encounter this one. These ghosters are going to be very annoying. Damavix. Just insta pop these Damavix with our drones. If they get good hits, they like almost. And, one tap these drones there we got popped we got any webifiers no webifiers seem to be present we can start boosting now we're taking a little bit of damage but we're hardly taking any damage at all it seems what is our range on our missiles because they're getting we're getting ghosted pretty hard or weapon disrupted pretty hard by these guys we've got three of them and they're all on top of us this will do one volley in right here one volley there we go. One volley there. And then we'll shoot one volley there. It will destroy them. There's a demon automatic suppressor too. It doesn't help stuff. Make everything go a little bit slower. Because the missiles have a higher likelihood to be shot down mid-air. Shoot this. Come on. Oh, we can't even shoot them. It's a short range demon automatic suppressor. That's the reason. Short range demon automatic suppressors are a lot stronger than the medium range ones. So that's why we're taking a lot of drone damage, but also we are taking a lot of missiles, missile damage or having the missiles go down quicker. We should recall these hammerheads because they're taking also quite a lot of damage from this steam automatic suppressor. Go for all these Damavix. The Damavix just, they give remote reps, I think, to the rogue drones. So that we're going to just take them out. They also spool up, you know, over time as well. I mean, it's not like the DPS is pretty significant, but still they can get pretty high if you let them spool up to infinity. You get this, and then we'll move towards the buy adaptive over here. Why is our total loot over here? It is being amplified a bit because we put this sister's core probe scanner over here. But it's still decent to 
have over 200 million now. We had like 160 something before. Come on, drones, please take out these hammerheads. We saw all those rogue drones, they just exploded there for a second because of the demon with much suppress. It was really nice to see. But hopefully it'll go a bit better now that we're getting out of range of this demon with much suppressor. It's really destroying my drones, messing them up real good. Ah, we have to recall these two. We're going to have to go augmented next. Because we're going some really hot DPS going on right here. We're hardly able to apply anything. Our missiles half the time are missing. Our drones half the time are missing. Half the time we have to recall them. It's not a good time with this short range even automatic suppressor. Super DPS. Go out and make quick work of these damas. Thank you very much. He was even being smart. He was staying near the Demon Ultimate Master Suppressor as well. So he'd switch to my drones, I think. Just take out this guy. I got down really quickly when we actually get some hits in with these hammerheads. Otherwise, they just often, they will often be missing a lot. It's very frustrating when that happens. See, they just absolutely annihilates the Damavix when they actually get hits in. But a lot of the time, they'll be able to see them missing. See one hit there. Ooh, some chaotic filaments. There was only a chaotic firestorm though, so not too good. Move towards this transfer conduit. Damavik. And keep it range here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty decent right there. Oh, there's still some two rogue drones who managed to somehow survive. <laughs> How did you guys survive? I'll have them focus on this uh Damavik that's got missiles already going on them because split up a bit it's going to take a bit longer they've got remote reps going on now we can probably split there we go shoot a little bit here so what is the total loot right here 221 million we started with i think that if we go here abyssal loot it is uh, maybe 40 30 million something like that we got inside so pretty average it's not like crazy good this all right at least we got average we didn't get below average that's uh, an important thing actually <laughs> It's going to sometimes happen. You get below average. It's very unsatisfying when you're in the abyss. Like when you do the T6s. And you just get a few million from the whole site. Thank you. Come again. That didn't even cover the filament cost. Okay. But we're going to boost the max shields right here. Just in the case of gankers. And then. We'll exit the site. I'll be ready to overheat our hardness as well. Just in case. But we have a big shield pool. So it does actually take quite a long time to boost it all up with our medium shield booster right here. Oh wait, actually no, there's a, it's a... We're not done. I thought we were done right there. <laughs> but we actually got another site. That would be quite scary if it was in a T6 where your times are a lot more borderline. Just to finish it. Okay, what have we got here? You've got, you can go to this transfer conduit. I mean, this extraction node. Have the drones directly go for Abyssal Overmind. And then we have our light missiles take out these little light drones in the meantime. So it usually saves a bit of time that way. Then I just forget about the overmind. By the time I actually get to the cache, then I am just noticing, oh, overmind just popped just like that. So it's quite fun to just do that. But it is a little bit riskier because now overmind is going to be shooting us all the time with the, all these uh, support drones. And some of these support drones can be quite deadly. With the EOR here, you see they've got the spotlighter. It makes target painting, makes us easier time getting hit by this guy. But had a little overmind or just abyssal overmind in general they don't do as much damage as stuff like caribbean tyrannos so that's why i'm a lot more relaxed like if it was caribbean tyrannos i often i basically always go for the deadly e war first like target painters over fires and newts but since this is uh, overmind overmind tends to be a lot weaker than abyssal overmind in terms of its dps so i'm pretty chilled out even though i'm just using my light missiles to slowly but surely take down these light support drones Shoot this guy, Spotlight Tesla. Tesla. I've got some, also some Ghosters. Not doing a whole lot though. Since these guys anyway like to be at point blank range. Uh, okay, we'll shoot the missiles. So you're taking a bit of glassing off shots, but even then, as long as we sort of go in a good tra trajectory that we don't approach them directly, the Abyssal Overmind, we usually will tank very, very well. Or get some like grazing shots, you know. Not the full shots that completely destroy your shields in one shot but we've got a big buffer so even then wrecking shots are not going to impact us too much we've almost done a full clip and almost taken out all these light drones right here what is our range 23 kilometers we can go for this loot right here one shot in the loot and then we'll go for one shot here of the forecast and approach it like that see our shields are barely going down even though the 
uh, a whistle over my eyes. Been shooting us all the time. Very chill, very chill. I wonder how much HP he's got actually, because the drones have been going on for quite a while. These augmented hammerheads. Oh, he's got half armor. You see, he's a very tanky boy, so you want to do damage on him straight away. <laughs> And he's also probably getting a tiny bit of remote reps from this plate forger tesla but the plate forger hardly does any remote reps so don't have to worry too much about it it's not like a trigger of remote reps that are so much more stronger it would have also probably been a good idea that i go for the the hammerhead twos they do particularly thermal this guy has equal thermal and kinetic resist so maybe it would have been just about better to use augmented or about the same to use augmented as the DPS like with the, the pure tick two uh, damage right here. Um, it's alright. The augmented hammers is nice to know that you're doing 880 DPS effectively, uh, or not effectively, but have 880 DPS flinging out there on the grid. Okay, there we go. He's almost destroyed now. This Hardle Abyssal Overmind. He has a pretty big structure, like uh, in terms of EHP. But since it's not being buffed by the Firestorm the same way, its armor is. It still feels pretty quick compared to the armor look even when they're shield boosting and they're getting like penetrating shots it's all right we're still tanking pretty good got a rock solid tank on this killer right here we all want to boost a max shield then we can recall our drones and just have the rest with my light missile oh and they're getting into range no i'm gonna oh, oh. look at that we just uh look so little damage left okay good just think that was just about enough to Finish that overmind right there. We want to boost a full shields just in case. Just in case the gank has come. There's the loot right here. The loots. That was alright. It's alright. 169 million. I think we got like 30, 40 million, something like that from this. Again, still pretty average. You hardly got anything from this room as well. You can keep it range of this transfer conduit and just jump out as soon as we get the full shields. Because I mean these changing shields can make actually the difference between life and death. I mean, it is quite a bit of shields we've got here. 20k. We get 3k more. It'll be like almost a coercer's worth of life because coercers do about 500 DPS. In a 1.0 system, they survive for like maybe 4 seconds, 5 seconds, something like that. So pretty much one coercer is how much HP is left on our shield right here. And that's not even factoring in resistances, so probably even more when it comes to resistances. So... Getting it to max shield is pretty important here, even though it does take quite a bit of time. We've got field extenders, not purges. I like the field extenders, you get the really fat buffer. Makes it really big. Obviously less passive recharge, but I feel like, especially for anti-ganking measures, it's favorable to have the extenders. And also in some ways it's good to have extenders because having a good recharge rate on your shields only really matters when you've got incoming DPS that's very close to your recharge rate. If you've got uh, incoming dps there's a lot more than your recharge rate then you'll have more survivability time if you have uh, uh, just more overall buffer okay now i can go and let's see what we've got here it was pretty long this side actually 15 minutes that minus 50 percent thermal contributed a little bit to it but let's see now what have we got here what have we got here have we got any abyssal gankers no abyssal gankers great all right, so T4 Firestorm done with a bit of exploration as well. We've got a 3 out of 10. Happy about that. So we'll do that next time in the 3 out of 10 while we make our way back towards a home of G2 Perimeter, that area in the forge. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.